Those of us who use Snowflake as well as Active Directory naturally want to implement single sign-on. So in today's video, we'll walk through step-by-step -step how to configure single sign-on in Active Directory. We'll look at the different commands to run in Snowflake. And finally, make sure that almighty single sign-on button does display for us when we try to log in and see it work correctly. The first thing we're going to do is head over to Azure Active Directory. And where we're going to go is Enterprise Applications. In the video on provisioning, we did set this up. So if you're not familiar with this, go ahead and watch that video and get this set up. You're gonna go new application and add Snowflake, but we already have it. From this window, you'll go over to single sign-on. By default, it's disabled. And what we wanna do is SAML, S-A-M-L. So we'll just walk through each of the steps here one at a time. First thing is the basic SAML configuration. Essentially, we need to let Azure know what URLs to keep an eye on so that it knows to connect it with Active Directory. And really the only piece of information we need from here is our Snowflake URL. So go over to your Snowflake environment and copy, just copy the whole thing. We'll delete some stuff in here. And the one we definitely need to add is identifier. And this is the main unique identifier. Click in here and paste in your URL. You can see the pattern that it's looking for so we can get rid of all this stuff. I'm gonna leave this slash in here. I found that sometimes I have issues when I don't keep it and copy this because we're going to need it again. Next, we'll fill out the reply URL. So click add apply URL and paste this in here. But instead, we're going to finish with dash fed dash login, just like it says here, no extra slash. Sign on URL, this is optional, but we can put this here again, just the same one as your identifier. Relay state, we're going to skip for now. We don't need it to redirect anywhere other than where we're trying to log into. And the log out URL is the same as this one here. So you can actually copy this. And instead of log in, it's log out. And that's it for this section. So if these are all filled in, save. It'll give you the green check mark and we're good to go. So close this down. Uh, we're gonna test later, don't worry about that. Next is attributes and claims. And if you click edit, essentially this is what's going to allow you to connect your Azure user with your Snowflake user and make sure it's looking at the same thing. And the main identifier in this case is the user principal name. And just so you know what this looks like, I've opened up this user over here. The user principal name in my case is this really long email address. And it's because I'm on a test account that it ends with this. But in your case, you will probably have a more legitimate looking email without uh, this extra stuff here, but just a heads up, that's what we're going to be working with. So it's going to tie everything uh, to that. Next is setting up the SAML signing certificate. This is already created for you, but this is something we're gonna need to add to Snowflake. So what you wanna do from here is download the certificate base 64. Let's go ahead and open that with some sort of text editor. I've deleted the certificate information here, but it would look something like this. You're going to have a bunch of values in between here, and that's really what you're going to want to copy. The other information we're going to need is this login URL. So this ultimately is something we're going to need. But at this point, we are set up from the Azure perspective. And next, we're going to go to Snowflake to make sure that it has the information it needs to work with single sign-on. So within Snowflake, this is the primary command that we're going to run. It's setting a SAML identifier provider. And there's documentation about this here. I'll leave a link for this. Uh, and it's just this one command. We essentially need to tie this to what we just built. So the first thing we need to fill out is the certificate. I'm just going to copy a little bit of this here. It's, yours is going to be much larger and you'll just copy the whole thing in there. For the SSO URL, we're going to go back to Azure and grab this login URL. It's this one right here that ends with SAML2. Copy this, and we're going to place this in here. And then select all this and run it. And just as a reminder, I deleted a lot here. You're only going to take what is within this part here. Don't take this and don't take this. It's everything in the middle. That's what you're going to copy and paste in there. So now this should be set. And the last thing we want to do is enable the SSO button. For example, when we come to this page, we want a button to be here. And to get that set up, all you have to do is run this command right here, which again is in the documentation right down here. Run this. And now if we refresh our page, we have this Azure AD button available to us. So now we have Snowflake set up and Azure set up. Now let's test it to make sure that we can sign in with a user. 
Now, in order for this to work, we need to make sure that we have a user in Snowflake that's also in Azure. So the first thing we need to do is what's called provisioning a user and creating that user in Snowflake through Azure. Again, there's a separate video on this topic, so I'm not going to cover it too much. If I go to the users here, we have one user tied to this group. It's John Doe. I want to create this user in Snowflake. So the first thing we'll do is provision on demand and search for the user. So we've just quickly created that user and sent it over and we can see username is the principal name, which is going to be the same as what we're trying to connect with. And if we go back to our users, we can see it's in here now. So this is the login information for this user. And we want to be able to single sign on through Azure. Now let's go back to single sign on and test this out. So we'll go down to test and I'll do sign in as someone else. And it says it does require a browser extension. So if you have a little note up here, just make sure you add that first and it will let you do this as somebody else. So we'll test and sign in as someone else. Click the button and here's where you put in an email or a phone or some information about the user. And in our case, this is the email that we need to use for this user. So I'm going to paste this in here. It may give you some security prompts, but I'm just going to skip this for now. Say sign in. And if it works, it should take us directly to Snowflake. So we're now we're signed in to Snowflake through single sign on. And all this worked because we have this user and it's tied to this user here. So it's all working together. Hopefully now the steps for enabling single sign-on in Snowflake are not that daunting to you and you're able to implement this in your own project. Let me know if this was something you were able to do. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you next week.